Hi, this is Chris from the Project Management Guide. This video is called How to Write a Good Risk Statement to Help You Understand Risk on Your Project. So welcome back. So this, this video is another, another one about risk management on projects. So as I've said before, risk management is not the most sexy subject, I'm afraid, but it's essential for project managers to get it, get it under control. And it's a key set of activities and skills uh, that you need to, need to understand and manage. So I'm going to explain how to do risk statements. I'm going to have a little bit of a rant as well. I don't think project managers are very good at doing risk statements. So I'm going to have a little bit of a rant, I'm afraid. Not for long, but I will do. And then in a moment, I'm going to show you how to write write simple risk statements. So I've got a simple formula to follow, and I've got some examples as well, so that you can use those on your own projects. So I'll explain what risk statements are when I when I sort of come to the examples. You'll see what I what I mean by them. But why do we do them in the first place? So first place. So they outline what the risk is and, and what the impact of the risk is on the project. And they're needed for communication to various people, your stakeholders, etc. And normally you write them down in a risk log. Um, so you, have, you write down all of your risks in the risk log. So it's important that we have a decent uh, statement of what the risk is and, uh, and what the impact is. So why do we bother? And the, actual, the answer is so that we can understand what the risk is, so that we know um, what actions we need to take. And I've got, as I said, I've got a little bit of a rant here. I, Project managers are pretty bad at writing writing risk statements in my experience. Probably put my hand up as well sometimes. And I don't understand why, because we go to the all to lots of trouble of identifying what the risks are. We put in lots of plans to mitigate them, but then we when we come to write them down and communicate them, we just write it really badly. We miss things out, uh, etc. And I, I just don't understand why we go to all of, all that effort and then do them wrong and just miss the main bit about communicating it out to people. So, you know, I'm just on a bit of a mission to make sure that we do proper, more effective uh, risk statements so that we can manage these things much more effectively and communicate them much more effectively to people. Okay, that's my run over, thanks. So I've got a simple formula here. And I think if you if you use this formula, then it can really help you to, to, to get your get your um, your risk statements simplified and get them to the point where so they're really un easy to understand and for the audience it needs to pass the test you know do i understand what the risk is and the impact on the project so that's that's what we're trying to achieve when we write out these risk statements and the the, the simple formula is is very very simply if an event x happens then there is a risk that consequence y and the project could be impacted in z way so it's a pretty simple formula. I think you should be able to, to, to use that formula. And it's probably best um, if I show you what the, the examples are to sort of really help you understand how we're going to do that. So the first example I've got is, is, a, is, a, is an IT, IT uh, project risk. So this project is stated in the, this is the risk statement here. So it says, if the new servers are not delivered by the 10th of February, then there's a risk that the commissioning engineers will not be able to start on the 11th and there will be a delay to the project timeline. So you can see here that so if I if I if I sort of spell that out and break that down, then basically what we're saying here is that if if using that formula, if the event, i.e. new servers are not delivered by the 10th of February, then there's a risk that the consequence, the commissioning engineers, engineers will not be able to start on the 11th. And so the impact will be, so there will be the impact will be a delay to the project timeline. So you can see that that simple formula helps us to get the event, what the risk is, what the consequence of that risk is, and what the impact on the project is as well. So it's, it's really helping to simplify the risk statement and make it very clear. If you move on to the next, the next uh, statement, I've just got another example here. So the risk statement is, if the new sales software is not delivered by the 1st of May, then we may have to extend the contract for the sales software testing team, meaning, meaning that there would be an increase in the budget required. So this is a really, you know, really common sort of uh, risk that you might have in a project. You know, some a bit of software is going to be late, which means that you might have to extend your software, your testing team, for example. It's really common, this sort of risk. So going back to breaking down the risk statement, 
So if event, the new sales software is not delivered by the 1st of May, then we have, have then we may have to, the consequence is that we have to extend the contracts for the sales software testing team. And that means that i.e. the impact on the project is that the, there's gonna be an increase in the budget required. So I hope you can see that if we just use this simple formula, if the event happens, then there is a risk that the consequence happens and then the project could be in, impacted in, in, a, in a specific way. And if we test that with our audience as well, so do, they, does the, do the audience actually understand what the risk is, the impact on the project? So I, I hope that you can see that if we use this simple formula, it will really help you to write better risk statements. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, there's plenty more uh, videos on risk management and, and in project management on, on the channel, and I've got a few more in the pipeline as well. So please subscribe. Um, also, I'd love to hear your comments on how you're getting on managing your risk and any challenges you've had. So drop me some comments below. And if you need any more information, you can find us at theprojectmanagementguide.com.